So the next sort of topic we've got there is about timing of surgery. And I think, I mean, we've worked together a lot over the years and the key is to have a knee that's settled down. I mean, we said it earlier that ACL reconstruction's an elective procedure. And for the most people, it truly is elective. We might come back to the professional sports person or elite sports person a bit later, but for me, I, what I want to see is a patient who, when I meet them in the holding bay immediately prior to their surgery and put a mark on their leg, if they volunteer the comment, my knee feels so good, I'm not sure I need the operation, I'll still have a feel of it and make sure they've still got a pivot shift, but um, that's how I want the knee to be. So they've got used to their knee. Um, they've got over the shock of tearing their ACL. There's a lot of emotion in it. Mm -hmm. The swelling has settled down. It doesn't have to be gone. It's just, I like it, the idea of a soft effusion. So what do you mean by that? I mean, we've got um, on the slide here and also um, when the video rolls, like there's, the, there's a, um, uh, there's the uh, swipe, swipe test. Swipe test. Yeah. So what do you mean by a soft effusion? Um, just that it's soft. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, there's fluid no, there. Yeah, 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 there can be fluid there, but the patient's sort of relaxed, so they're not tense. Yeah. It's not a knee where you can actually see the fluid bulging out and you can't, you have to be, in fact, probably coming back to your swipe test, you have to be able to do a swipe test because if you can't, if the knee's so swollen, you, you can't actually, you can do the swipe test, but it doesn't mean anything because there's so much fluid in it, you can't push it all up into the suprapatellar pouch yeah. and then come back down and see that little puff of fluid on the medial side of the knee. Yeah. So, I mean, it can be a moderate effusion. I don't think that matters, but you want to be able to do that swipe test easily and see the fluid moving around in the knee. So in other words, yeah. blood that was there that might have clotted has yeah. broken down and yeah. it's, it's not a congealed, um, fluid within in the joint. So that's how I look at softness. Yep. I like them to be able to activate their quads. Yep. And if you can't activate your quads before surgery, we know it's going to be harder after surgery. So I like good active terminal extension. Yep. You know, it's such an important thing to me going into surgery. And I'm more than happy to just keep putting people off until they've got it doesn't have to be hyperextension. They don't need to go back to their normal hyperextension, but they need to at least be out at zero with a, you can see their vastus medialis contracting nicely. They're not wincing. They're not having to strain. They've got the coordination right. Instead of so many people, when you say, you know, tighten up this muscle, yeah. they tighten their quad. Everything they, goes. You know, they lift yeah. their thigh up yeah. off the bed and their glutes are contracting. Yeah, yeah. as the whole body tense. Yeah. 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 And I say no, and then it helps to put your hand under their knee, so just push on my hand and then you can gradually slide it out and so they can push their knee back into the, the examination couch or whatever they're lying on. So I, I like that. I like them to have enough motion to be able to, to ride at a stationary bike mm -hmm. and clearly to be off crutches unless there's some reason I've told them to be on crutches, which would be very unusual. Um, so that they basically walk in feeling and I say, look, if you want to go to the gym, go to the gym. That's fine. Just do a workout. You're not going to hurt your knee. Yeah. Probably not big on encouraging jogging, but if there's no, not much in the way of bone bruising, no meniscal pathology or chondral pathology of note, if they really want to go for a bit of a jog, I'm not fussed about it. And it just shows they're in the right mindset. Their knee's in the right mindset, if you like, from a physical point of view. Um, so it's a combination of the knee being right and them being right. From a physio's perspective, I think your comment kind of on getting that uh, distal quads contraction is, is, is spot on. And the thing that I'd add to that would be that if they can't get it after the injury, pre-surgery, as a physio, you know you're going to have a real hard time getting it going, going post-op. So you, you've, it's practice. And that's what I say that in a lot of this, we'll talk about prehab next. Yeah. But um, think of this as the dress rehearsal for you know, the, um, what, the early stage rehab after you've had your operation. We've got to get your distal quads going, we're we'll confident on a bike, we've got to make sure we know how to get your knee settled quickly. Um, let's get that right now before you have your operation. Once you're in that zone, you're gonna to have to go through it again, but you've been there and done it, so you'll know what to do. Super important advice, I think, absolutely. And I will, as I said, I'll put people off until they get it and I'm quite happy to review them. I'll say, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. And then they'll push me to tentatively 
book their surgery. I'll say I won't book it for the next day because I don't want to be cancelling you the day before surgery. I'll book it a week out. Yeah. And I mean, I will, I'm pretty dogmatic about it. I'll just sit there, sit there, sit there. And I think physios often worry in terms of the patient not being able to get that good active extension that the knee is locked. Locking after a first time ACL injury is not impossible, but it's not common. And you'll see that on the MRI anyway. So usually it's sort of pain, a bit of swelling around the fat pad, swelling at the front of the knee, maybe a few fibres of the ACL. And that's why I say I don't necessarily want to see it go into hyperextension. But I've even gone as far as cancelling someone in the holding bay who insisted that her knee had come out straight. So now I see them. I just, you've got to prove it to me. And yeah. there can be a lot of tension building up. Yeah. And, you know, if the patient's young and the parents think they're the ne next best thing, um, yeah. You know, it can be an interesting scenario, but I guess I'm at a stage in my practice where that's the way I am, and you know, there's plenty of other people you can see if you want to. <laughs> well, it's, it's a beautiful segue into just that last point on this slide about elite athletes. I mean, you read we're in Melbourne, so yeah. we're always talking about AFL athletes. And the question I can't remember how many times I've been asked mm. is, I'm waiting four, five, six weeks because to have my reconstruction. How come, how come such and such a player goes in within three days of doing theirs? Are they that much different to me that their management is different? And um, in some ways, it's it's not a difficult question to answer. But I'm interested in your 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 the way you will kind of frame that up with your patients on are elite athletes treated to different dif differently to everyone else, and if so, how? Well, I think they are in terms of prehabilitation. I mean, they've got access to cold compression devices of all sorts of brands, but. Um, typically they'll come in saying I've had the game ready on for the last 48 hours or 24 hours, whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, so they've got very good control of their swelling early on. They're usually worded up that that's what they need to get their quads going. Fundamentally I still have the same discussion with them and the perception in public about how quickly they have their surgery is not necessarily absolutely correct. It may seem very that it's within a few days, but not uncommonly it's within a week or two. And for me, that's really good because they've disappeared a little bit from the media. They've, they're even more emotional about it. Mm. Um, they've had a bit more time to adjust, but I still insist on, at the very least, you have to show me that you can activate your quads in at least zero degrees extension, maybe a couple of degrees of hyperextension, and you've got at least 90, but I'll tell them I'd really like you to be riding an exercise bike. Time spent now getting your knee ready, you'll get back in spades post-operation. So it might take you two or three weeks to have your knee ready, but that'll save you way more time on the other side. And I think that's really important to reassure people that they're not, none of this is wasted time. This is all making their rehab much quicker. Are there exceptional circumstances? I'll give you a hypothetical yeah. that, um, you know, you have a, a football player who does their knee towards the end of the season. This is my last year of contract doc. Um, if, I'm, if I'm not ready to go by the start of next season, I'll get chopped. What do you do? Do you, do you still just say, listen, we've got to do this properly and you're going to do yourself a disservice or do you start to take a risk? It's not hypothetical. I've seen that page. Yes, I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, look, no, I'm, I'm still pretty keen on them being right, uh, yeah. you know, having their knee, their re knee ready because I'll say to them, I have no problems if your knee's ready for you to play at six months. I mean, that's a completely different topic and we're not going yeah. to go there today, but yeah. uh, to me, the time from surgery, it's only part of the story. It's much more about how the knee's functioning. So that's how I tell them, don't you worry, I'm your ally at the other end of this. You know, I'll be telling you, if your knee's okay, I'll be your supporter. And, but for your knee to be okay quickly, it needs to be okay before surgery. So I'll still try to just push it off a little bit or you know, even fudge it sometimes and can't fit you in this way. I'm sorry, it's really chockers, but we can do the week after. Yeah. Um, so in principle, yeah, I stick to the same rules.